Uh, just chopping up the boxes into panels for people to paint at the moment. We're both um, part of Transition Port Phillip, and that's a network, a local network in the Port Phillip area um, to connect people that want to see action on climate change and from a local level. So we're helping today with the Spectacular Action Chariot, which is going to be these bikes. Um, Gonzalez, what's happening here? Uh, this is the kids section, so I assume we will start setting up in a minute. This is for the hope tree, and people are going to write their hopes for 2030 on this piece of card. So we're um, cooking on the campfire in the Womanjika garden. So they can look up potatoes, and we'll have them out there on the campfire. Production line. <laughs> The material came from recycled materials from the children's farm. When we did the Winter Solstice Festival, they gave me that, the leftovers, and then I turned them into a grain. We're going to have a, uh, a welcome to ceremony, welcome to a country ceremony later on, but we're also going to be putting all the potatoes in the fire. <laughs> Homemade paints, uh, I guess it's the recipe. Um. And we've started to write some new actions to do for climate action, so improving water saving at home. I'm going to perform some Little Feet music songs because I am Rachel and I am from Little Feet Music. Fantastic. And so I'm going to do some songs for little people in about 10 minutes. Jaker, Marin Big Big, Bunwurang, Nurmda, Badapton, Atta, Willem. Welcome to my country, to the traditional land of the Bunwurang, the land of the sacred river and the Great Bay. As a descendant of the traditional owners of this country, I'm pleased to be able to welcome you today. According to our tradition, our land has always been protected by our creator, Bunjul, who travels as an eagle, and by Wan, who travels as a crow and protects the waterways. Bunjil taught the Bunwurang to always welcome guests. But he always required the Bunwurang to ask all visitors to make two promises. One, to obey the laws of Bunjil, and two, not to harm the land or the Bububs, the children of Bunjil. This com commitment was made through the exchange of a small bout dipped in the water. So once again, Woman Jaker, Merrim Big Big, Unwurang, Nurm Dur, Merapton, Atta, Willem. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Can you guys comment on how you think um, climate art and science can fit together and what some of the benefits or obstacles, problems might be? Yeah, I think the, the obvious thing is if you're really trying to communicate a complex message to people, you actually generally need to touch them in in here because it's 
There's so many hard, hard messages in climate science that if you just keep on rounding home the death and destruction, uh, it's very, very challenging for people and they, they, they're just emotionally and intellectually switched down and won't listen to the message anymore. So trying to engage playfully and kind of give people a bit of a vision about what the future could look like is really, really uh, important for engaging people genuinely in action. Yeah. And would you have any advice about doing projects like this? For us as artists trying to yeah. link uh, art and climate science and things happening in policy and communicating through art projects. I think one of the most important things is to think about what practical outcome you might want, which I know is not normally something we think about in the arts. Um, engaging, as I said, with people's hearts sets a sort of foundational message, but a lot of people are quite aware of climate problems. So the issue, in a way, is saying, how do you translate that into action? You know, telling from a behaviour change perspective, which is sort of my, my background, um, the Telling people a clear action that they can do leading to results is going to do far more than giving somebody a really deep heartfelt message, but then they don't translate that into action. Great. Thank you. I think the forum's about to start, so. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Lou.